Hey, 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 what's going on, everybody? So, a while back I did my 2020, uh, 2021 MLB free agent predictions video. If you haven't seen it, take a look in the description down below because that's where it is. Um, today, with what we know with what's happened so far this offseason, I'm going to do my updated version, my part two, based on you know the, a lot of the moves that have been made and... and, and you know, there's still, there's still, and what's going to be crazy is, you know, now we have a little bit more clarification on what 2021 is going to look like, and we don't know all the, all of it yet. But free with with the spring training only being a couple weeks away, things are really, really going to start heating up now. You know, the majority of the moves have been trades and quite a few blockbusters, and I think there's still some more to be uh, that are going to happen. But free agency is going to start picking up, and even this, just this most recent week, I mean, DJ LeMahieu resigned with the Yankees, Liam Hendricks signed with the White Sox, so. Um, you know, quite a few moves have been made, and um, those are the those are the major ones. And the Yankees also signed Corey Kluber, but you know, teams like the Mets and the White Sox have made significant moves. The Padres have made significant moves. Other teams have made incremental moves too. The Royals have made a, you know brought in a couple uh, signings. They made a couple nice moves, but now is when I think really gonna we're really gonna see some pickup in terms of. Uh, <clears throat> what's gonna you know where where guys are gonna go? And there's still a boatload of guys and. I don't have everybody here because there are hundreds of free agents and quite honestly the video would be like four hours long if i went over everybody but i want to go over the main guys who we know and um and to somebody that i haven't put out there just let me know in the comments and i'll and i'll, t <clears throat> I'll tell you where <clears throat> excuse me i'll tell you where i haven't predicted to go so with that let's get to it by the way i'm going to put if i haven't mentioned i'm going to put the other video in the description so take a look at that that way you can see the if these things have changed you'll kind of have an idea why because of moves that those teams have made or other teams have made and so on. So um, this is the fascinating part about it. But let's get to it, okay? Shane Green, okay? He's, he's part of the heavy, 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 heavy relief pitching market. And it's deep this year. And, um, you know, I, I actually think he's going to go to a team that needs a little bit more bullpen, San Diego Padres. They brought in, you know, Hugh Tarvish and Blake Snell via trade. and um, But they, another reliever or two, I think, would put them over the top. Um, and they'd be really right on the Dodgers' butt. And I would not be surprised if they beat the Dodgers. I really wouldn't. Um, I have him going to the Padres. And teaming up with him, I actually have Keone Kila, um, who, in my opinion, is a good fit for the Yankees, being a Yankee fan. But I, th I, have, him, I have a feeling that the Padres are going to pounce on both of them. They're probably going to be re pretty reasonably priced. And they're going to give them exactly what they need in the bullpen. Okay. Moving up, Angelton Simmons. You know, he played with the Angels. Um, you know the Braves and stuff, but I think he's. I actually think he's a fit. He's going to replace Marcus Simeon uh, in Oakland, which he's a perfect fit there. You know to help. You know that defense up the middle of the infield. I think Simeon's going to sign elsewhere. You'll see soon where I have him signing. But I think he's a perfect fit. He could be a good fit on a lot of teams. He's a lighter hitting shortstop than Simeon is, but um, he'd be a perfect fit there. And again, a, you know, he's bringing in guys on reasonable contracts and stuff. Um, yeah, I, I, I just see him. Just, you know, owning shortstop for Oakland. So, um, Eddie Rosario, who's a, who I think is going to be a very valuable outfield hitter. He he's got a good contact bat. He he plays multiple positions, and he's going to be a hidden gem for teams like Atlanta, who I think are not going to resign Marcelo Zuna. Would I be surprised if they did? Not at all. But I think he'd be a heck of a replacement for Marcelo Zuna. He would give equal value. He just doesn't have that power back, but he doesn't really need it with that lineup because I think they're going to make another move later on via a significant trade. So in terms of uh, really, really significantly boosting that offense. But we'll see. Atlanta's close. You know, they're, they're close. Um, oh, I wrote Shane Green twice. Excuse me. I'll just have him going to San Diego again. <laughs> and uh, He's going to sign with him twice. Excuse me. <laughs> Next up, Brett Gardner. You know, as a Yankee fan, I you know I loved him for the years he was there, but I my gut tells me he's going to make a reunion with Joe Girardi in Philadelphia, and particularly with the Yankees bringing in uh, or acquiring Greg Allen in a trade. Yeah, he's a light hitting outfielder, but he plays multiple. He plays all three positions. He has four years of control left. He's a speedy outfielder with a good glove. And in that you know, in that regard, it probably gives them value as the fourth outfielder, um, and maybe give them one of their young, younger guys an opportunity. But I would not be surprised if they still they have to make a couple of trades right now anyway because there are two spots over the uh, roster limit. So I think they're going to trade away some guys to clear up some spots. I would not be surprised if they brought in a Michael Brantley or something like that if they had the cap room. I would not be surprised at all. But I have him moving to Philadelphia. So and I we thank you for the time you put in, Brett. Chris Archer. 
is a good solid pitcher, but he's kind of you know hasn't been that great recently. But I think a lot of pitchers can go to Miami and <clears throat> other players and just in a low key environment. And you know I think he'll be uh, in good hands with Don Mattingly and those coaches, and I think he'll develop nicely over there. I really do, um, and have kind of a resurgence. I, I still have Miami making a couple of incremental solid moves, and he's going to be one of them. Okay, Jake McGee, left-handed pitcher. I think he was with the Dodgers this year. He's going to go to the oop, New York Mets. Uh, there's a chance that that Brad Hand potential signing may have fallen through. Um, it was just it wasn't solidified yet. There was news the other day that Brad Hand was signing with the Mets. They were reaching an agreement, but now it hasn't happened. So it, and that usually when that when that when something like that happens, it usually tells me he's going to go back and someone else is going to get him. So in this case, I have him getting another lefty, and he, they have, they need another reliever or two. Um, and the, but they've done some great work this offseason with that ridiculous trade for Lindor and Carrasco, bringing in James McCann, and they've already brought in Trevor May for the bullpen as well. But I see them bringing in one more guy, and Jake McGee is a solid guy to bring in. So, um, Steve Cohen's done some good work. Rick Porcello, I actually have him replacing Jake Odorizzi in Minnesota. Again, they need pitching there too. Um, and Odorizzi has been kind of their uh, reliable, you know, guy for a while there. But I have him moving on too. So I have Porcello going in there to replace him. And uh, they need some more pitching too. They they're a team that to me has you know a bunch of number twos and a bunch of number threes, but no clear cut number one. And the last time that they you know won a World Series, they had guys like Jack Morris, Hall of Fame pitcher, who was a clear cut number one. They don't have that now. And I'm not saying Porcello was a number one, but if they're not going to have enough one, then they then they need a bunch of depth. And I think Porcello is going to fill one of those spots. Cole Hamels, I actually have them. He's going to do a showcase this week. Actually, um, I have the Milwaukee Brewers taking a flyer on him low cost you know i don't think he's going to get what he got last year from the braves because that didn't really pan out um he's going to have to establish you know uh his health and maybe take a, a maybe a low base salary with a lot of incentives on there uh to commit you know to minimize the risk but he'd be a good uh good uh good fit for my um milwaukee john lester i actually have him staying in the national league central but going over to st louis It'll be his third team with a with a uh great uh, championship pedigree and um you know going in there and adding to that rotation between right and a couple of these other guys i think he'd be a good fit you know i think he still has some pitching left in him he's a bulldog competitor he's had some great postseasons he's not what he was before a couple years ago but i still think he has value and he can give it to the cardinals at a reasonable price so i think because they've been looking to kind of minimize either increase a payroll or or shed a little bit and he gives them an opportunity to do that so Kirby Yates, you know, coming off of a little bit of an injury, but um, he was a dominant believer, reliever for quite some years. I actually have him replacing Liam Hendricks, who's now with the White Sox, over in Oakland. Okay, Cesar Hernandez, I think, is a good option for a for a backup infielder or or starting infielder, but he can back up like an elite infield. Um, plays multiple positions, good contact hitter. Again, I have him um, going over to Arizona. And I, they'll they'll probably in, unless they unless they make huge moves this uh, with whatever time we have left. I just don't see them catching the Padres and the Dodgers after what they've done. I don't. But again, crazy things have happened. But I have him going there and being a valuable piece for them. So a reliable piece. Alex Colome. I have him moving on to Boston, adding to that bullpen. Um, I don't think he'll be back with Chicago now that Hendricks is in the fold. Hendricks is you know the best reliever in baseball for the last couple of years. So. I have him moving to Boston. Yadi Molina, I actually had him going elsewhere in my last predictions video, but at this point I have him going back to the St. Louis Cardinals and just uh or, unless he retires, but if he plays, I have him going back to the Cardinals. He's a he'll be his first ballot Hall of Famer on the team. So um he was a lifer there. Jerks and Profar, super position guy, plays a you know a lot of uh uh, positions, particularly in field and outfield, is only 28. I think he'll bring some value to Baltimore with a lot of these young guys. He'll be able to play multiple positions and give them some decent value there too. So in a low-pressure environment, I think it'd be good for him. Trez Trevor Rosenthal, one of the more attractive relievers as well. I have him jo joining John Lester over in St. Louis, adding to that bullpen as well. I'm not sure if Hicks has come back uh, um, fully from Tommy John surgery, so a little bit more depth in the rotation and the bullpen will be good for the Cardinals. Colton Wong, I don't have him coming back to the Cardinals, unfortunately, but he's a valuable player pretty much wherever he goes. I do have him staying in the Central, though, but going to the American League, and 
joining Dayton Moore's Kansas City Royals. I think he'll be a really valuable piece there. And with Whit Merrifield not playing second now and playing mostly outfield, he can go right in and play multiple positions. They also brought in Carlos Santana from the Indians, and they brought in um, Michael Taylor from the Royals. They brought in Mike Minor. So they've made some moves, and he, sh- he said they want to spend and they want to compete. So um, it's going to be tough to compete in the Central with uh, the White Sox being a behemoth now. But you never know. They might even be going after the Indians after the moves that they made and and the Twins, you don't really know. So I'd look out for Kansas City to improve a a decent amount this year. Um, Taiwan Walker, one of the attractive starters. He's had a little bit of injuries, but um, when he's on, he's healthy. He's a talented. He's only 28. I actually have him joining Chris Archer in Miami and uh, giving that rotation some veteran veteran depth. Um, Garrett Richards. Um, he actually has pretty good stuff, but I have him coming to the Bronx and being that next depth pitcher um, for the New York Yankees on top of Corey Kluber. I still think they need to trade for I, I hope they trade for like a Luis Castillo or Kyle Kendricks, but I, I still think they need to bring in another starter on top of that. They need depth. For some reason, whether it's every year or every other year, the Yankees lose either three of their five starters or four of their five starters to injury, some freaking injury or you know Tommy John or whatever it is, but the Yankees always go through the depth and it's it's crazy it's remarkable how they gut the depth and just so i think garrett richards was a guy that can give them some veteran protection they brought in julius i think his name is chassin as well for some veteran depth it's a minor league deal but they still need more depth (laughs) james paxton i actually have him bringing his experience over to detroit and adding some veteran experience to that young rotation that's led by Casey Mize and some of these other young stud players. I think he's going to be part of that rebuild. He'll probably get a three-year deal. Um, Jose Quintana. Houston needs some pitching. With Verlander down and you know Granke on a decline, I think he'd give him some valuable uh, veteran depth. And um, Again, he's not an ace, but they need pitching. They need bullpen. And I know they just signed, um, I think it's <coughs> excuse me, Pedro Baez, who was with the Dodgers. So they got a reliever, but they need some starting pitching depth too. So I have them going there, and giving them a little, giving them some decent value. Uh, who's next? Carlos Rodon. Where is Mr. Rodon? Oh, I have him also going to Kansas City, giving them some more pitching depth. Um, offensive, they'll add some depth on the offensive side and the pitching side. So I think he'll again, he'll give them some value too, uh, with Colton Wong and just incremental building like Miami. Brett, oh wait, Brett Gardner. I did it again. Sorry. <laughs> Back to Philly. Sign in there twice. Excuse me. Justin Turner. Um, I have him actually leaving and going to Toronto. I have the Dodgers um, probably trading for a third baseman. But if they don't, maybe trading for one of the shortstops and moving Seager to third. But I, I just have Turner going over to Toronto. I think they'll, I think they'll give him more than the Dodgers are willing to give him, uh, especially if he wants that four-year deal at an advanced age like Josh Donaldson got. Um, and he's older than Donaldson was when he got that deal. Um, adding him to that that young nucleus, those young hitters, Vlad Guerrero and Bichette and some of these other guys, he'll be a nice addition to that team. So, um, Masahiro Tanaka, I also have him leaving and uh, going over to the West Coast, joining the San Francisco uh, for, uh, uh, Giants, I was going to say 49ers. They need some depth. The West Coast is close to his home in Japan. There have been signals of him going back to Japan and pitching. I just don't see him coming back to New York. I think he'd be a have more impact in, in San Francisco on that rotation on that team um, than he would in New York. And um, I hate to say it, but it's just the way I feel. And uh, moving on, Tommy Lastella, I actually have him coming to the Yankees. Um, if if I were the Yankees, I I would bring in a guy like this who can give their infielders a regular break, and uh, he can still play a hundred plus games, giving everybody he could just rotate around the infield. He plays most of the positions, at least three of them, and he's got a valuable lefty bat, a good contact hitter, and to me, I think he would be more valuable to the Yankees than a than a, 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 a Michael Brantley would. I don't want to see them move Clint Frazier, but they might have to in a Castillo trade, but um, and in this in that case, I would. Maybe look at Michael Brantley, but if there's a way they can get him without ex- getting rid of Frazier, this is the move I would make for the Yankees. That would be a really, really helpful move to help back up all the infielders. And he's a clear upgrade over what we have already. And I do like the guys, but Lestel is a guy who is who uh, would really, really be a monumental help for the Yankees. Jonathan Villar. 
going over to Donnie Baseball's team in Miami. Adding some value there. <laughs> Veteran presence, another incremental bat, and, and making that surprising playoff team in 2020 that much more potentially playoff bound in 2021. So, Jackie Bradley Jr., I actually have him come to the New York Mets. Um, I was originally thinking George Spring was going to go there, but now that the moves that they made, they're closer to the luxury tax, and I think that they could get Bradley for a heck of a lot less than they're going than uh, George Springer is going to get. So, um, it is what it is. Michael Brantley, I had mentioned already, I actually have him replacing Jackie Bradley Jr. in Boston. And let's talk about him trade them trading Andrew Benatendi. So we'll see what they do there as well. But I have a move into Boston. He could play a couple of different positions as well. But uh, I, I just see him as a really good fit there. So um, JT Real Muto. I actually have him turning down that massive Phillies offer and getting a slightly bigger one from the Washington Nationals. Even if it's deferred money like Max Scherzer, I just see him going to Washington and, and uh, becoming a part of that. You know, they've already added some guys who um where the national the universal dh will help the nationals because bringing like guys like josh bell and uh kyle schwarber and i think it would help jt real muto to give him a break and let him play dh too which is why why i that's one reason i'm in favor of, of a universal dh because it helps national league teams kind of better construct their lineup and give that ninth spot a more productive at bat um that's just my opinion but i have him going to washington brad hand i don't have him going to the mets actually i have him coming to the yankees and being that bullpen piece that they need um i think cashman's got a couple moves up his sleeve and i think they're going to wind up with brad hand i don't know how but i think he's going to wind up with him and then wind up probably not bringing in another reliever probably let one of their young kids um maybe like a brooks Krisky or one of these other young guys um have a shot uh in the bullpen they've done a good job at developing relief bleachers so i think that's what they're going to do and he'd be a great compliment too uh, Chris, Zach Britton and it also gives them flexibility in case they find somebody who wants to take a role as Chapman just a thought but I like Chapman but he might be better served in another team as well so we'll see I have him coming to the Yankees Jake Odorizzi like I said I had him leaving Minnesota I have him going to Arizona joining uh, Cesar Hernandez over the Diamondbacks again incremental moves and he'll be, I think he'll be a valuable piece in that rotation Nelson Cruz I can't see him leaving, particularly with what the moves the White Sox have made. In order for them to stay competitive and, and not let not just be completely blown away by the White Sox, they need to get they need they need Nelly back. Period. End of story. Marcel Ozuna, Texas Rangers. I with that new stadium, they didn't get a chance to play. You know, in the playoffs last year, with that new stadium, they didn't have any fans. Um, and I think they're going to spend on two bats this offseason. He's one of them to help. Um, kind of improve that team and put them in a position to maybe contend in the West, which is a little bit... It's still wide open, man. It's still wide open. Especially with Hendricks leaving Oakland. I think it's, you know... I think it's wide, wider open than it was a couple days ago. Didi, I have him going to Cincinnati. And being their shortstop. Leaving the Phillies. Um, and um, being replaced by <laughs> Marcus Simeon. Okay? In the Phillies. So... Um, two shortstops kind of moving moving to new homes, and I think they're going to be valuable pieces anyway. I think Didi um, can probably get a two- or three-year deal in this environment, and I think Simeon can get the same. So um, Simeon's a little bit more, I think, of a heavy hitting on the power side, but Didi's a, bit, a little bit better, more of a contact hitter, and his, dip, his defense has improved tremendously. And he's just a great guy in the clubhouse. Really, really class guy. Um, Jock Peterson, I have him joining Ozuna. In Texas, make two big splashes. I think those two are going to be the splashes, uh, which will really, really go a long way towards boosting that lineup and actually going for it. So, George Springer, I initially had him going somewhere else. Watch the other video if you want to know where. I don't have him going there anymore. I have him being the big expenditure, the other big expenditure in Toronto. Okay, bringing in him and uh, Justin Turner, that would work. Oh my God. Work one is on that bullpen going along with their improved pitching already. Um, even if uh, Taiwan Walker doesn't come back, they did you know, re-sign Robbie Ray and they have Ryu. I think they'll make an, a move, some kind of move on the pitching side. But bringing in Springer and Justin Turner would take that up to the next level. That offense it would just be sky high through the roof. And he's a clutch guy. And last but not least, Trevor Bauer. I don't have my prediction change with Trevor Bauer. And there's a lot of teams that he might be a fit for. Um, 
but there's one team that I think in the American League that's one move away from <coughs> being probably the favorite uh, to make the World Series, and that's the Chicago White Sox. Angels can bring him in, but they need to make several moves before he can have the impact. Okay, the White Sox, they bring in him, they brought in Hendricks, they traded for Lance Lynn. They've made some big moves. If they bring in Trevor Bauer, in my opinion, it puts them over the top. Um, pretty much over every team in the American League. That's my opinion, but um, and you know, I hate saying it as a Yankee fan, but the Yankees still have a couple moves to make. I think bringing in Trevor Bauer really takes them to the next level. And it puts them in a position to be right up there with either the Padres or the whoever makes the, the World Series in the National League. That right there to makes them the favorite to either make the World Series or win the World Series. So these are my 2021 updated MLB predictions. Let me know what you think. Um, if you have comment feedback, put them in the comments below. And please hit that subscribe button and uh, hit the thumbs up. It's really helpful to the channel's growth. It lets other people know this channel exists and that your support's greatly appreciated either way. And uh, I wish you all the best. Have a great week. Keep an eye out for the next video because it's coming. I'll talk to you next time.